You're listening to Discovering Truth with Dan Duvall. Well, folks, we, we're here on Discovering Truth with Dan Duvall. I'm super excited to be hanging out again with my friend, Todd Weatherly. Uh, and if you haven't already seen him on the podcast, where have you been? He is the senior leader of Field of Dreams in Adelaide. Todd and his wife, Rachel, have a desire to see people come into the fullness of the finished work of the cross. Between them, they possess significant business and ministry experience that they draw into all kinds of diverse situations and environments. They are certainly at the cutting edge of what God is doing in Australia. Their website is fieldofdreams.org.au and uh, they do stream their Sunday services, which are amazing. And so I just wanna say, Todd, welcome back to Discovering Truth. It's been a long time, Daniel. Well, you know, it feels like it, even though it no, was that I, long ago. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Folks, I know. The, the last time I had Todd on, it w- I had both Todds, and we were talking about New Jerusalem. We were talking about Zion. We were talking about Living Stones. If you didn't hear it, you need to go back and get that because that was a powerhouse podcast, a lot of revelation, a lot of fun. Oh, it was. It was. It was just there was there was a real flow and uh, uh, yeah, Todd, not this one, brings a lot to the table and um, yeah, well, I, I, it was it was actually really fun actually. <laughs> it was a good time, but today we're here, Todd, because we're going to be talking about what God is opening up to the body of Christ. You know. Uh, before we, we, we started recording here, you, you said to me, Daniel, people are asking the wrong question. <laughs> you said, you said they are asking, how can we carve out a timeline of what's coming based on no transformation in us? <laughs> and, and you think there's a problem with that question. We need to talk about it. Todd, what's the problem? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> I think that look, if we just looked at where we are at at the moment, there's, there is a, a lot of, I don't know, even rage, I suppose, because of what's happened prophetically and uh, uh, with people predicting Trump, some people saying he's still the real president, there's no president. You know, look, I don't want to weigh into that. Um, I think that we, we've actually... We, I, I really think that, that we are asking the wrong questions because we're meant to take dominion. And I think that a lot of our questioning comes out of the paradigm. The paradigm is Western thinking, Greek thinking, it's passive. We talked about the Prince of Greece. So we want to be able to observe. We just think that watching and praying um, is just sort of like, you know, keeping up to speed with the news um, and listening to a few prophetic ministries. And that's still very passive. And so we need to understand what God has already done. He, he says, it says, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. Why does it say, why do we have to initiate it? Because at Calvary, God already drew near to us. Near to us. And Pentecost, he drew way closer. And so that comes out of eternity, the spirit realm. And now what we have to do, I like when in the English someone broke down the word responsibility, it's our response ability. And when we keep looking for just pure timelines and we're trying to sort of get the inside word, we're trying to work out, Lord, in the supernatural, in eternity, can you show us what Bitcoin is doing? Can you show us what these shares are doing? It, it, it's not even that. It's actually we need to find out what the Lord has already done, what our role is. is. And there is a natural resistance to personal change and transformation because it's uncomfortable, it is painful, not tormenting, big difference. And we just empower people just through our passive observation. And we're meant to, we are literally meant to rule the world with Christ. Um, to him who overcomes, he'll rule the nations with a lot of iron, you know, and, and to him who overcomes, he will sit on my throne as I sat on my father's throne when he overcame. And so we're, we're, we're really, really missing it in that regard. 
So I just know that um, I think that, you know, if, if we we're talking about, let's just talk about eschatology for a minute. Um, now, firstly, if you haven't heard me before, I am an offending machine. Uh, I'd be shocked if you listen to this and don't get offended. You'll get challenged as well. And that, 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 that by the grace of God, I don't care um, because what happens is that we're following, we're following carnal narratives that don't work. They just don't work. I have such a respect for the people who have gone before us and the people in ministry, but everything's changed so dramatically and so quickly. Um, I even feel that um, while I do respect people who are, have a conservative position in politics, the conservative position is still a limiting belief system. We actually have to be manifesting glory from heavenly dimensions as sons of God, mature sons of God. So it's still speculative. Are we in the very, very last days or are we in some form of a cycle? Now, there's arguments for both, but it really doesn't matter because if we understand that what we are called to do, we can't go wrong. We cannot go wrong. But I feel that there's by uh, necessity as a mother of invention, by being forced into a corner, we are going to, we're having to really explore is it, have we been engaging with limiting beliefs? Have we been deferring responsibility? Have we been laying blame on others? And I would say this, it's pretty hectic. Some of the things I'll share is pretty hectic, but I would, I would say that, 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 that in regards to it's almost a no brainer I've been studying the book of Revelation um, and the book of Revelation is not a chronology because you've got Babylon fallen multiple times in different chapters. I believe Revelation is a series of visions that overlay. And um, I've had a lot of data points come to me. Now, I don't, I would, I'd be lying if I said I have this big panoramic thing and, you know, come on, Dan, you know, we're going to talk and then Sid Roth's going to ring me and then I'm going to sell some books. That's just not going to happen. But I feel that we're asking the wrong questions. And um, if we were to say at the moment, uh, what is something that is no wiggle room? I believe that scripture, it says in Peter, it says it's only one interpretation. But what you have is there's layers of interpretation. Now, uh, for example, uh, Paul, who wrote inspired scripture, in some contexts, it seems like he was using an Old Testament example and extrapolating it to as a prophetic type. So everyone got baptized in the Red Sea, you know, and, and the, the manner and the, the, the bread from heaven is Christ. Jesus said it himself. Um, you know, he, he, he's talking about el honoring eldership. You shall not muzzle the ox while he threshes the grain. And so he's taking things that are literal and he's added a layer to it. And so I feel, so number one for those listening, I love the Logos I feel there's so many amazing things in it. There's the surface level, the literal. So whenever a, a, something's written to a church, there, there is a literal imminent contextual understanding, but then there are levels. Now, the book of Daniel is really incredible because in Daniel 7, you can, I don't want to really weigh in on it because I want to talk about what, how we can... Uh, um, I, I want solution-based processing today. Um, Daniel talks about uh, the different creatures coming out of the spirit realm and affecting the world. And basically they are predominantly coming through gates of, of, of rulership. You could call them government, but then what happens is you see is that uh, what you have is that just a quote and I'll, 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 I'll paraphrase as well. Hang on. Here we go. I've actually got a hard copy Bible here today. Here we go. And then it actually says that the, the, the little horn came out and actually with the eyes of a man in, in Daniel 7, 8, and his mouth was speaking uh, arrogant words. Then verse 9 says, I watched until the thr till thrones were put in place and the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was white as snow. The hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame. Its wheels a burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The court, the court was seated and the books were open. You have this in eternity or the spirit world, you've got this court scene with the ancient of days. Then it goes on to talk about how, um, uh, what took place and you'll, you'll see it over and over is that it literally does say 
that the Little Horn waged war on the Saints or wore them down, and it, the Saints were given over to us, given over to him for 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 a time. So that doesn't mean we sit down and we we we, we have this like siege mentality. We have to do the Great Commission. We have to engage like never before. But the point of difference you start to see here, and this is very important. And I was watching in the same, at verse 21, I was watching in the same horn was making war against the saints and prevailing against them until the ancient of days came and a judgment was made in favour of the saints of the most time. And, at time. and the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. Then it goes down into greater detail, verse 26, but the court shall be seated and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it forever. Uh, and then it says, and the greatness of the kingdoms of the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints most high. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. So at the moment, what's interesting is that, so because I have an inquiring mind, and I know that probably you have the most inquiring mind of anyone I've met, um, and which, which is a form of asking, seeking, and knocking. So I have a need to know. And I feel there's a lot of very low-level narratives being paddled out there, and it disappoints me, I'll be honest. And so I think that um, with this, why is this a big deal? Because there are lives at stake. Nations are at stake. Generations are at stake. So this is, this is we, we've gone beyond the, the ministry paradigm. You know, I'm trying to build a ministry. We're talking history now. So if, if we, at our church we say, congratulations, God chose you for the foundation of the world outside of time and space. He nominated you to come and star in this movie and he put you here to overcome and not to be a statistic. So that's the, that's the cool part. So we, knowing that God does not put us on the earth and leave us without hope is that we can actually back engineer the victory of the cross to, to all of this. So I think that here we have to engage in the Great Commission continually. We have to. But there's a level of wisdom and it talks about courts. It talks about judgments. And I don't want to get right into the courts of heaven today. This is not what this is about. But what I want to, uh, it's interesting. It says, and the little horn will intend it says he'll intend to change times and laws in the Chaldean because this part of Daniel's Chaldean or Daniel's mostly Chaldean. Um, the times is, is seasons and laws are decrees. So at the moment, the social engineering that's going on is over the top. A lot of the church is still catching up and a lot of the church will bow that knee to Babylon, unfortunately, because they, they haven't been diligent. Um, and so I'm fascinated with, 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 with changing times. Now, what I'm firstly I'm doing, I want to qualify what I'm saying by giving it context. And how is he going to change times? Well, is he going to change, you know, like it's two, 2021 AD. Is he going to change the date? He might. But the seasons, the word seasons is more like Kairos. So, so I'm just telling you, just I was talking to someone the other day and this jumped into my spirit. And he, this guy, he goes, I was meant to go to Asia. And I, I, my wife and I were meant to go to Asia. And it was all planned. We prayed into it. Now, I saw their scroll. I saw their book. I ministered to them. I saw I interpreted dreams. You know what I do? I saw I'm like, yeah, this is not like imagination. This is, this is like concrete. And it came into my spirit. If you think about, if you think about, the billions of timelines of people I was meant to come and be with you guys for the advance. Hmm. You guys have, you know, meant to probably do some other things as well on top of what you're doing. I was actually, I was having appointments to speak to governments and presidents. I was doing, we had a crusade lined up where someone was paying for a stadium in Mexico. Uh, like we're talking. So what happens is with everything, you think about all these timelines, all these timelines, and then chop, done, you're done. Now, now you've got to shelter in place. Now you've got to do this. So I feel that on a very, very relevant way is timelines have changed. Now, what am I saying that? Is this a semantic? It is not. I've been to nations and the Lord goes, I want, I want to give you a significant, you know, um, inheritance. Ask of me and I'll give you the nations as an inheritance. I'll give you significant inheritance. I've seen it. I, I've had throne room encounters and then shock. So rather than sort of going, oh, you know, oh, this is terrible, this is scary, the biggest thing people have to overcome is fear because once you live in fear, it creates a landing place for, for really bad things. So you've got to deal with that. But you look at the, the billions, 
Dan, the billions of timelines that have been just chopped, not, not adjusted, plane travel, all these different things, um, the mass disinformation, the mass confusion, um, the, 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 the mass media, uh, lamestream media, uh, uh, and, you know, people who are, you know, with conspiracy, obviously that's a term that was coined around people not being able to stick with the official narrative of Kennedy. We, you and I know that. But then what happens is you've got people, they, they want to find out themselves the explosion of citizen journalism on, on, on social media. And what happens is that people, people don't discern him because even a broken clock is right twice a day. So you've got these people putting out this conspiracy and some of it is completely spot on. Some of it just is, it, it's unsubstantiated in there, you know. So the point I want to make is we're in a time where timelines have just been chopped and regardless of whether they're very end and the end of a chronology or we're in a very, very deep, dark cycle, it, 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 it should not affect us with how we respond to it. So I hope I've qualified that without getting to bogging people down in theological detail. But I just think that, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've just turned 52. I have never, there, there's no precedent. I can't now, I mean, we can, actually that's not true. I've seen things in the world I've never seen before. And in, in Adelaide, especially in our church, Field of Dreams and, and our core team and you know, our extended church, I've never experienced access to revelation and glory. I've, I've never, like, it's, it's amazing. And I'm just, just sharing off, off, off air with you just the crazy blessing that we're under. So I think that, that I'm just trying to qualify, firstly, the times where we're in, um, whether it's an eschatological cycle or this is this is it. I just think I, I think that the Western mindset can't grasp the multiverse. I'll be honest. I just don't think I just don't think we're we're, we're wired for it. We're wired to passively sit and look at a timeline and what's going to happen now. I just don't think that's where it's at. To be honest, I feel that we have way more say in things, and we don't under, we don't under, you, we don't understand how amazing we are in Christ. I'll get I'll, uh, 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 one illustration might offend people but you know i got put in my disclaimer you know oh you did you did you totally well I'm, we're ready for it todd we're we're ready for it so so i was i went to argentina years ago and i ministered a friend of mine anna mendez anna and emerson mendez Farrell, um and we ministered and she's just really excited now now anna is a genuine maniac you know she's one of the most she's just crazy awesome and and you know if if you looked up a thesaurus and you wanted to get looked at fear of man and you looked up antonyms, opposites, her face would appear. All right? Okay. So uh, it's just crazy. So she goes, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna have the, we're gonna, Todd, um, we're, we're gonna go, we're going to um, go in with the lions. We're gonna be in with the lions. I'm like, what's she talking about? Like I'm still in Australia. She's still in, in Florida and we're gonna meet in Argentina. She's gonna meet the lions. Now, background I had reoccurring encounters at night where I'd get chased by lions and tigers with crazy spirit of fear to the point where a lion came in I was in this small room and I had nowhere to go so I fully went no and this lion hesitated a bit a big male lion no and, and then I just I started like yelling and rebuking at it and it fled and I went oh I actually took authority. I mean, these were such vivid encounters. I woke up and I got set free from a spirit of fear. So I got set free from a dream encounter by rebuking this lion. So that was my background. So should we get there? She goes, we're going to a wildlife park and they're going to let us go in the cage individually with the lion alone. And I'm thinking, well, great. I overcame it in the dream. But I don't really need to do it actually. Now... <laughs> So I was the first in. Now, I, I've got it on my phone somewhere. I don't organize my, my photos. You know, since 2020, I would say the most dominant, the dominant of my albums on my phone is screenshots from even, <laughs> you know, data points on, on through the news and stuff. Well, that, I, I hardly take photos anymore. So, oh, oh, screenshot. Anyway, <laughs> thousands. You know what that's like. Well, so you, anyway. And sometimes you send me the memeable ones. 
which, which are hilarious. Oh, that, that we, you know, uh, Mary Hart makes good like a medicine, so be healed. Uh, so anyway, I, um, <laughs> so anyway, so, 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 so I was first in, and I go into the cage with this lion. They're flipping. I, I got, a, I got a big cranium, right? This paw was bigger than my head. It was a male lion, and there was a female lion, and I, I got go up to it, and I put my hand on its back, and this thing's huge. And actually, it actually was in a bad mood. Like they said, he wasn't he wasn't himself that day. I said, great, you know, like I, I pick all the days. And I literally you see a picture of me. I got my hand on his back, and I'm going, all right, all right. Got a, got the photo, got the proof, got the evidence. All right, I'm out of there. And anyway, I said, how 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 can that happen? And this is what happens. They get the lions as little cubs, and they bring them up. They have about I don't know. We can see half a dozen to a dozen dogs. You take the little cub. You raise it with dogs. The lion thinks it's a dog. The lion thinks it's a dog. And you go, no way. So it's got that level of subservience. It's got that level of man is master, not, not food. You know, people are friends, not food. And like, so what's happened within some of our limiting paradigms is the body of Christ think they're a dog. They have to whimper, shelter in place when we're really lions. And so we've been so fed this stuff. And when you have people radically like just obsessing over news and researching COVID, and there's a, there's a place for that. But when it hits tipping point where you start to, it starts to dominate your eye gate, you will cower like a dog about to be punished as opposed to roar like a lion. So that's, that's, the, the anal- that's my lead in analogy, basically. So uh, did you have any before I go in, and before we do this, do you oh, want, did well, you want to go back? But the problem is, Todd, when you start talking, I, I mean, I could jump in at any time, just interrupt, take the microphone and go off. But I am not going to do that today because you got me excited. But this is called self-control. I am <laughs> going to let you dive. And when I can no longer take it anymore, <laughs> interject. <laughs> take us there. Okay. Let's talk. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, um, again, another disclaimer, a friend of mine, Jim Drown, some of you guys, if you listen to this, you'll probably listen to it to a few times because it is like a zip file being put in your spirit, add water. Mate of mine, a friend of mine in Georgia, Jim Drown, really, you know, like family, he said, Todd, when you revelate, it's like drinking from a fire hydrant, you know, it's like water splashing all around your face, you're only getting a bit. So anyway, look, um, so, so this is, I, I pray with an amazing group of people and nothing is off the table. We want to know, ask, seek, knock, ask, seek, knock. And we, we do that. We've, we've, we've talked about things like transfiguration. Is that on the table? We had a conversation just before Christmas or just after Christmas about transfiguration. But, but before any of that happens, there's going to be transformation of the mind. That, that, that's, that's, that's a cultivating reality. We talked about, uh, you know, the morning star. Um, you know, Revelation and Second Peter um, and a lot of different things. But then something just jumped out and it just, it, uh, it just got a hold of me. Now, people have said to me, why haven't you taught this earlier? Well, I'll tell you how I operate is the Lord leads me. And I, I mean, you know, we have the law firm that my wife runs. We've got the church. We've, 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 I was doing my tenor and stuff. Crusade. I mean, we've got a lot of young family. Um, most importantly of all. And so I have to come to the Lord and say, what do you want us to talk on and what do you want to lead me? And so we, 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 that's how I steward. So God opened up this subject and said, you weren't ready. The people weren't ready to receive it before, but they're ready now. Before, because for two years we've been teaching on repentance and renewing the mind. Now some go, yeah, great meeting, and won't do it. And a lot are doing it. So Jesus said, um, he said, if you listen to my words and do it, you like the man building his house on the rock. So we have to, renewing your mind and meditating on the word takes time. It's a cultivation. You've got to cultivate things. So there's that. Um, so uh, that aside, this just jumped out at me, the subject of Melchizedek. Melchizedek is mentioned in Genesis 14. King David goes there in um Psalm 110, and then we have nearly nearly two whole chapters dedicated to it in Hebrews. 
And in Hebrews, it says, I think Hebrews 5, it says, we have much to talk about this subject, but we can't because it's too hard to explain because you're so dull. And so, so look, I want to talk to people today about Melchizedek and, and Melchizedek is an enigma. But before we go into really hardcore speculative stuff, I want to just, this is, let's stop looking about speculating in the abstract for possible future events. Let's, let, let's go into the, into the spirit world, into the now, into Christ through his Logos and the Holy Ghost. In Revelation chapter 4, chapter 1, verses 4 to 6, it says, John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him and who is, who is and who was and who is to come. So that's the best way you can put in three-dimensional language of the supernatural. It's, it's, everything's almost happening concurrently and already taking place. I am who I am. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler over the kings of the earth. To him who loved us. Now, God's already loved you. Don't feel his love. He's loved you. So we've got to deal with those blockages of unbelief. We've got to just, you know, do the biblical thing, not speculate in future ab abstract events that may or may not happen. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm just holding back. My, I, I do have self-control. I, I learned, I've, I've pretty much learned that at Jupiter maybe in the last couple of days. <laughs> 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 so to him who, who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Okay, hey, wait, what? God's, no, yeah, because in the millennium, you know, we're, we're going to be ruling and reigning. So what we do, things that God has said is a now reality, we push into the future, and it's just not how it's, you know, it, it says in Ephesians 1, 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has already blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Mark 11, 22 to 24, have the faith of God. Uh, talks about moving the mountain if you believe what you say. Therefore, whatever things you ask for when you pray, you must believe you've received them and you'll have them. So the West doesn't understand it because we're so locked into the sense world and the time-space world and now faith is the substance of things hoped for. So it says here that we're already kings and priests and you're going, hang on, uh, Lord, I didn't get that memo. Well, that's a nice, no, it, it's a paradigm. So what if, like I said, for all the people listening to this, what if the Lord could show today, if we could go to some old doors that you've already visited and they didn't open for you, or we went through some doors that opened before, but you didn't get the result that you wanted. What if today God gave you a key that opened doors that you've been to many times but they didn't open before? Well, today I believe we can, we can, we can get that because it actually does say God, there are, there are keys of knowledge. Jesus rebuked the, uh, the people sitting in the gate of his day, saying, you've taken away the key of knowledge. So it actually says with all your get, getting, get understanding, wisdom is the principal thing. And what's amazing is that it says in Psalm 47, sing praises with understanding. So today we're going to engage with the spirit of understanding. So the Lord says we're already kings and priests. Wow, that's great. It's new covenant. This is amazing. New covenant and Oh my gosh, uh, so grateful. What if I was to show you that it was always God's original design and God's people are not interested? God's people want the benefits without transformation. What if I was to show you from scripture that this is a long term deal? So maybe rather than take dominion on the earth, we refuse to govern so we become governed and then we speculate about end times. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? That'd be really interesting. <laughs> okay, so let's just say. <laughs> Exodus chapter 9, 19, verses 3 to 6. What we have here, so God had this incredible um, covenant with Abraham. And Abraham didn't completely obey it. Like he didn't leave his father's household. You know, dad came with him for a while. Partial obedience is disobedience or delayed obedience is disobedience. You know, lied about his wife. Uh, you know, curses broke out and stuff. But Abraham never came under heavy condemnation because he was a friend of God. So wouldn't it be interesting if the same type of covenant was meant to be for a whole nation, but they said, we don't want that covenant. We actually want to stay slaves. We don't want personal transformation. We don't want the confrontation of intimacy. We just want Moses to be the guy and we'll hear from him. So we're going to trade on a lower covenant 
And that's happened in stages. I don't want to get lost in covenant today, but it happened in stages where they said, no, nah, we don't want it. We don't, we don't want this. But now we're going to engage a covenant. And, and according to the covenant, God, you will be duty bound to punish our disobedience and punish the, the, our enemies. That's the covenant they traded down for. But can you imagine if that wasn't God's original design? Exodus 19, verses 3 to 6. And Moses went up to God and the Lord called him to the mountain saying, you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel, You've seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. That's called grace. That's called grace. God did it. They had to lean in by faith and obey, but God did it. He brought them to himself on eagles' wings. Now, therefore, if you'll indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all the people. Right? For all the earth is mine. You ready? And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests yep. and a holy nation. So God's intent was them to be a kingdom of priests. And they said, we don't want it. No, this is what we want. Moses, you be the priest. We will hear from you. We don't want intimacy. They had the slave mentality, you know, that, that, that we don't want to die, but we've seen that God speaks to man and man lives. So they pretty much didn't want that. So God's original intent was a kingdom of priests. And they said, no, because they didn't want intimacy. Gee, I'm glad, Dan, we don't have that problem anymore. I'm glad we've graduated from that, that low-level human nature. Oh, and the Todd, 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 Todd. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I, I just have to say this because I, I don't know what planet you're on. In this planet, we don't have it, Todd. I'm being facetious. I know you're kidding. But it's like it, I'm highlighting this now for those of you that are listening, right? Just imagine how ridiculous that sounds. And now we're like the ones with egg on our face. Please. Well, it, it's, it just is, it's, 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 it's a, a time, it's been a problem with human nature for, for, for uh, you know, since the fall. So we, being, being intimate with God and taking responsibility is scary. So this is what we have here. This is actually God's plan. Well, and and, you, and, and it, it's, 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 go on, I can feel that lack of self-control kicking in. What's going on? It's a lack of it. It's a lack of it. It's a very, very deep tie. <laughs> God was trying to bring these people into alignment with origin. He, he has loved us since the foundation of the creation, like that idea that we were formed in Christ. We've always in our spirit known him and we've always been known. And he's trying to unlock an alignment with origin, which is a kingdom of priests. Well, so remember, we can go to the same doors, but with the key of knowledge and change everything. So what you have is you go, God says, I want you to be so close to me that the things that are killing you will get burnt off. The, 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 the ropes that, will bind, that are binding you will burn off, but people don't want it. It's, it's evidenced here. And again, we can speculate. See, um, Emerson, this is so powerful. Uh, Emerson, uh, Anna's uh, married to Anna. He, he said to me, he said to me, Todd, I love this so good. And I, I, it, it's, it's such a key. He said the, the Old Testament was predominantly, not exclusively, but predominantly physical and external. The new covenant is predominantly spiritual and internal. So what we do is we don't take that to heed because it's Jesus says the kingdom of God is within you. So what we do is we push everything externally and I can't believe the prophets got it wrong. No, Trump's still in this. It's always someone else's fault. Ba -ba. So God today is addressing people where they can start at the grassroots level and actually start to engage the grace of God and personal transformation. Now, because I, I'm, I will be skipping on the mountaintops today because I just, you know, I just obviously because of, Kronos time and stuff. So why is this such a big deal? I'll tell you why it's a big deal. Because, all right, I, I, I'm going to, 
I'm going to give two more scriptures and then we're just going to, we're just going to blow it up. And I am going to do my very best to deplatform myself. So um, basically what you've got is that first Peter chapter two, verses five and nine. Uh, but you also as living stones are being built up as a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Then it says, verse 9, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous, marvelous light. So you've got this incredible, this is, this is hidden within scripture, that we're kings and priests or a royal priest or a kingdom of priests. Now, if I'm going to backtrack now, because we started this off in Daniel 7, if we start to engage this, if we start to engage this, God visits now very, very messianic book, prophetic book of Zechariah. <sighs> Mind-blowing. Uh, again, I'm, I'm just being disciplined. I'm walking past all the rabbit trails. Then the angel of the Lord rebuked Joshua, who was the high priest the, under the Levitical priesthood. Thus says the Lord of hosts, if you walk in my ways, if you walk obediently, and if you keep my commands, then you shall also judge my house and likewise have charge of my courts. I will give you places to walk among these who stand here. So as we start to engage what priesthood is, God will give you such authority that you actually start to judge. Oh, but I don't want to call fire down on people. I don't, your judgment's bad. I'm glad you raised that question in your heart. Psalm 19, verses 9 to 10. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Ju the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold. Yes, much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey in the honeycomb. So firstly, if we start to function in the royal priesthood, we've got the Old Testament types and shadows pointing to the now reality, to the now reality. Um, and then you actually have, if you do, and the old covenant, if the priesthood yields, if the priesthood yields to its function, then what we get to do is we get charge over his courts and we get to judge his house. And we get to, and, and there are judgments. Now, judgment, you go, what, what, you know, I mean, calling down fire like, you know, in Revelation and whatnot. The Old Testament is a judgment was the way to steward the kingdom. So judgment was indispensable. That's why Solomon asked for discernment or wisdom so he could judge as opposed to punish. So you've got basically the government gates taken over the world. It's a top-down style government. God's people have chosen not to govern. They've chosen instead to become Christians. Um, and so I feel that the highest calling or point of identity is as a child of God. We start off as a technon, a young, immature child, pre-bar mitzvah per se. And then we graduate up to huios, and huios is that you actually run the estate. You, you, you've actually stepped into your double portion inheritance and you help run the family business or the kingdom or whatever. So God's calling us as sons to change the world, not sit there and work out timelines. Um, Jesus, tell us when you're going to restore the kingdom. Jesus says, not for you to know times and seasons per se, but, for you, but, but, but you shall receive power and go out. Now, I'm, I believe we need, there are very relevant scriptures like First Thess Thessalonians 5, but you know that the, the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. Again, that's a whole other subject. But when they say peace and safety, peace and safety, everything's peace and safety, you know that sudden destruction will come. But you will not be overtaken by this because you walk in the light. Um, Jesus said in, 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 I think, Revelation 3, uh, probably the letter to Philadelphia, the church in Philadelphia, he said, uh, because you've, commit my, you've, you've kept my commandment to persevere, I'll keep you from the hour of trial, which is to test the whole world. <clears throat> there are so many nuggets in there. But if we function priesthood, this is what's really crazy. So sonship is it. If you're caught up in being a Christian as opposed to a son, you can wonder, oh, I don't think I'll go to church. I don't, I don't, I don't feel like I'll be like, I don't think I'm going to be a practicing Christian or whatever that looks like. But when you understand sonship, it's very hard to unsun yourself. That's like becoming an uncreated being, which is just ridiculous. So what then happens, here, here, here's the conundrum, Daniel, and this is, this is my deplatforming statement. Mm -hmm. 
I'm just, I'm not having second thoughts. I'm just trying to work out how I'm going to word it for maximum effect. <laughs> I, you know, mm. people go, don't upset the apple cart. It's, it's not working. There's nothing to upset. So, um, all right. I was preaching on stage and I've got an apostolic call. It is what it is. And I'm on stage and I, I don't, that's not, none, nothing to do with my identity, to be honest. And you know me, I'm a big kid. I'm a well-informed big kid. I've got a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm, but I'm not like, I don't, you know, call me apostle or bishop. I, I'm, for me, I mean, if that's your point of respect, great. But I'm preaching and I hear a voice of the Lord speak to me and he goes, he said, this is, the Lord says this is a temporary arrangement. As I'm speaking, so he's speaking to me, but not interrupting me, you know. I don't know. And uh, yes, men can multitask, isn't that amazing? And so the Lord said, This is a temporary arrangement. He said, You, he said, in eternity, you won't be an apostle like you are now, but you'll always be my son. So I feel the highest connection point is, is, is the being born again into the household of God. Here's the other thing you ready? Because this whole kings and priests thing is steer, seriously still veiled. And I'm going to speculate in a minute. So, again, here comes the deep platforming. The narrative of most of the body of Christ has been through the fivefold. The fivefold is called to equip people for the work of the ministry. Bingo. However, only a small percentage of the body are fivefold, maybe 5 to 10% at best. And what we generally do is we, we actually generally make people like ourselves because you can only reproduce after your own kind. So I can teach you, go out to all the world, preach and, and, and win people to Christ, but you're telling people to do things you're not doing. So, so everything has that organic reprodu re reproduction. So I feel that after sonship, sons and daughters, is kings and priests, and under is the fivefold. But you've got the fivefold teaching people the fivefold, and we've bottlenecked and we've ground to a standstill. We should be teaching people how to be kings and priests. Not everyone's called to be fivefold, and I know that not every I know that fivefold's not trying to make everyone fivefold. Some are, but we have to teach people how to rule and reign, and how to connect heaven and earth, and that's through the priesthood. So that's our bottleneck. Now, if we can get enough people engaging this real quick, we can change everything real quick. Why? Because priesthood is between two dimensions, and, the, and a lot of a lot of Christianity has become very earthbound. And it is not a universe, it's a multiverse. It's, it, it, you, you cannot follow the word of God if you, unless you understand it's a multiverse. How can fishes and loaves multiply out of, out of hands? How can a Red Sea part? How can blowing a trumpet make walls fall down, uh, calling the dead back to life, etc.? So it's a multiverse. And you bypass your intellect if you meditate on the word. You actually, the word of God is, is sharper than it's sort of a piece between your soul and spirit. So here we got this situation where we've got this kings and priests. What does this look like? I'll tell you what it looks like. Jesus, it says, and I'm, again, skipping on the mountaintops, he is now our high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Jesus is the high priest. We are not high priests. We're priests. Now, we, uh, Jesus, that, that when Jesus died on the cross, in the theological boxes, he fulfilled the law. He, 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 everything, he was the fulfillment of all things. And so now the Levitical priesthood is done away with. So we're not, we're not kings and priests, the Levitical priesthood. We're now kings and priests according to the new order, Melchizedek. Now, I want to make it very clear. Some people will be saying we, we're now in the age of Melchizedek. Look, we're still, we need fivefold. We need fivefold. We need people being preaching, training, equipping uh, releasing, uh, uh, you know, bride minister. We, we need fivefold. So Melchizedek and fivefold work together. So one doesn't usurp the other, but everyone is a king and a priest. So if you're listening to this and you're going, you, you go, I'm a king and a priest. Yeah, that's what the Lord says. I'm not saying it. I'm, a, I'm just an echo. Um, wow. Hmm. Huh. Sorry, just messages come up on my feed. Interesting. So uh, Catherine Kuhlman died 45 years ago today. So anyway, for what it's worth, that just came up on my feet. So I think that um, what's exciting, Daniel, is this, is that people understanding the kings and priests, I believe it's the way through. 
I believe that we, like Mary, we can bring that we can change timelines. He will intend to change times and laws. What I love <coughs> is the is the priesthood is um, the priesthood has it's it's it be, it's it's thy kingdom come, thy will be done on a praxis level. And so, but this is this is where it gets hectic. And I, I, I I'm just to, to 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 make it incredibly legal. I want to read a scripture. So it's so so if you want to research this for yourself, it says this in um, uh, Hebrews five. But we're going to go to Hebrews seven. Read from verse one. This Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. To whom Abraham gave a tenth of all. So Abraham tithed to Melchizedek. So Melchizedek just appears. Being, uh, 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 first of all, being translated king of righteousness. And then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace. Now, this is Melchizedek. Without father, without mother, without genealogy. Gene, yeah, genealogy. Having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the son of God, remains a priest continually. Jesus is now our high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. So we have this enigma in scripture because there's not much written about him in the second temple period. There's a little bit and it's hectic, so don't worry about it. <laughs> so right now what's happened is this, friends, if you get a hold of this, it actually says that we are partakers of the divine nature through the precious promises and the knowledge of him. So we can take these keys. Now you go, what was a lot of rabbis go, yeah, we, we think we think uh, Melchizedek is Seth or he's this or he's that. I don't agree with that. I think that there, you, 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 on a hermeneutical level, and again, hermeneutics only goes so far, without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the son of God, remains a priest continually. So Jesus is now a priest according to the order of Melchizedek. I'm just going to just get the whole deplatforming same as I believe Melchizedek is a manifestation of God, like a theophany or Christophany, but it's a mystery. So what we have to do is there's only so much. What we've got to do is we've got to take the, the, the strongest types and shadows of the Levitical priesthood, the Aaronic priesthood, and we've got to use those types and shadows and back engineer them to a type to what we have now. So what's amazing, Dan, is that it's so simple. We can do things that we've done done for years and not got the result we needed because we do it with wisdom and understanding. Wisdom is the key that unlocks doors. Then as we engage this, it says, I'll give you charge over my courts. Oh, that's courts of sacrifice. No, there's also courts because, because it says you'll judge. It says that in Zechariah. Uh, um, chapter 3, verses 6 and 7. So th there's courts and there's judgment. And it's not bad. It's, it's bringing order. It's bringing order. And then we see in Daniel 7 is that everything's going bananas until the court was seated. So if people start to function as a royal priesthood, you're going to start to see heaven invade earth through, through wisdom keys. So I think, that, um, I think that we are called to rule and reign in a ridiculously amazing level. Now, firstly, let me just say, I'm not an expert and I'm walking this out, right? But we're seeing incredible things here. Like I said, last year we saw the people come back from the dead and get brand new organs. Uh, we've just had like a, what a, in a healing room, someone just fully, people getting healed instantly. Um, and uh, we, someone just said that they had long-term diabetic, serious diabetes and their body went weird for a month and they went to the doctor and said, no, you don't have diabetes anymore. We had stage four or five cancer healed last year. So this stuff is just normal. It's not like, hey, let's just put this on social media and build a platform. It's just normal. This is what kids, this is what God's children do. This is what kings and priests do. But um, do you, so, so before I just, we, we start to look at landing the plane in regards to what it looks like, do you have any questions or anything you want to say? Dan? Well, look, I, I just want to bring out a few points. I mean, um, you know, the whole idea that Melchizedek is Seth, I, that, that actually, folks, comes out of the uh, Book of Jasher, which um, is a, they, they call it a pseudopigraphal book. I don't know that I can buy the line. That was one of the things I struggled with when I picked up this particular text because I said, how is it that he's a son of Noah when it says literally without beginning no genealogy, no father, no mother. It didn't, it did, it didn't add up. It didn't add up. You know, uh, the thing is, Todd, I think that vantage point is huge. 
people without an activated spirit have a hard time comprehending the truth that God is bringing into the earth in this hour. The problem is that the natural man comprehends not the things of the spirit. And so when you talk about bringing in a government from another dimension through wisdom keys, it's very hard for people to comprehend that out of the natural man, which is where most preaching, unfortunately, has left people. It's a natural church processing a spiritual God through a natural mind and conforming that presentation to an acceptable paradigm. Like, okay, well, this is our sphere. This is our box. And this is how God fits into how we experience life. Therefore, this is what Christianity is. And this is how a prophetic timetable will play out. It's either going to be A, B, or C box within this frame. And God's like shattering the whole thing. But you can't shatter if you want to park in the natural mind. And the, the thing is, there are so many things. Like I, 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 I often struggle like with Jesus. It's like there's so many things I want to tell you, right? And I sit down with people all the time. I'm like, there are so many things I would like to say. But you cannot receive it. You literally can't hear it with the natural mind and get it. The spirit has to be up and active to digest what's coming in. And I think that the idea of being a royal priesthood in Melchizedek, being qualified as sons of God to stand in the Lord's courts and make judgments out of them, the Lord's counsels and bring order through them is spiritually discerned, spiritually experienced, spiritually engaged and enforced. And, um, you know, I, I, I tell people like the human spirit, let me just say this, just the other day, Todd, just the other day, I'm sitting down with one of my clients and you know what they told me? They said, Daniel, the angels that work with me, they were all abducted. Oh, that's unfortunate. It looks like they're in a bad situation. Like, oh man, you know, this is going to be a, a lot of fun here. Like who abducted them? Well, let me tell you, <laughs> Satan, Lucifer and Leviathan, like all three. <laughs> this is a threefer, you know? And so what happens is my, my spirit stood up at, at immediately. I was just like, I don't, I don't like this. And I felt it and I'm like, you know, and, and at that point, I, just, I, I literally go into a different mode. And, and the honest truth is, you don't even have to say a lot of words. When the spirit is up, particularly if it happens to be Todd's ruler, I'm picking on you right now. <laughs> He'll get his turn later. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 when, when, when my ruler comes forward, I have to leave the house. Okay. So, so. You know, it's just a smash and grab. And it doesn't matter what the entity, when you're working with the backing of heaven, the power of the kingdom and the activation of all of your resources. And I, I have a whole thing, Todd, I haven't even think, I don't think we've had a conversation about undiscovered inheritance yet, which is all of this inheritance in Christ that's specific to the spirit um, that's being unlocked. It's just like, you know, you begin to see how, wisdom keys bring in the government of God into this world. You know one, and I, I'm gonna park here in a second. I'll say one more thing. Occultists, when they are experiencing the spirit world, after they go so far, stop realizing a difference between what's in what they call the astral plane and what's in what they call the natural plane. It's like those two worlds merge. So, so if they, like, like, you know, there's this witch doctor, I read a book, you know, he got a, a chest from the spirit world. It, it was literally from the underwater kingdom, but it's a wooden chest. It exists in the physical realm, but it's from the spirit world and, and, and that kingdom. And he would just put it in his house. It's, it's a total cursed object. I mean, it, it literally was fabricated by demons and they would transfer money into the drawer of this particular box. Every day, be able to go in there 
just grab money, physical money, but it comes from the spirit world. It's this kind of stuff where you have one realm interacting with another realm. And it's actually something that you are living out of, grounded out in the physical plane. This is a world of engagement that the church has been completely locked out of because what they experience as a counterfeit, we actually do have access to as a genuine, but we're trying to bring it through the gate of the natural mind. Doesn't work. Okay, I have to stop. No, 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 it's great, it's great. <laughs> well, look, since, it's interesting because at the moment we're looking at treasures of darkness, uh, mm -hmm. stolen inheritances, Isaiah 45, the gates of bronze, uh, complete restoration, all those things. We, we're tracking with that with our internship at the moment. It's, it's, it's a thing. Um, and I, I, it, it, with, with Melchizedek, Melchizedek is who you are. It's, it's a function. Your identity is as a son in Christ. You're in Christ. And then Melchi the, the, the priesthood is massive. Why is this? Is this a, a semantic? Is this another little bit of information? to add on to the pile of information that we already carry around with our theology, no. It now becomes a paradigm, you function a paradigm. So what you got is that it says here, it says that with Melchizedek, so you've got a priest. What does a priest do? A priest offers gifts and sacrifices. So you go, well, I'm a priest. People walk in, yes, I'm a priest. Well, you're not doing much about it, are you? Why is this such a big deal? Because priests are called to mediate but they're called to offer up gifts and sacrifices. You actually start to tune into the frequency of heaven. You actually start to f the, the frequency of eternity and you offer up gifts and sacrifices. And so a sacrifice will cost you something. So we want everything on the easy and on the cheap. So Jesus was our sacrifice. He fulfilled the Levitical priesthood. So now, according to Romans 12, we are, our lives are a living sacrifice. Um, and we offer up the sacrifice of praise and picking up your cross. Look, look, look. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. A lot of people, they've engaged the faith message or the prophetic message, and, they, and it's their subconscious narrative is that I want transformation. It's too painful. I'm telling you right now, you will not access eternal grace and training flaws unless you understand your sacrifice. It will cost you something. But what you do, so Paul said, I was a Pharisee of the Pharisees of the tribe of Benjamin, circumcised the eighth, the eighth day. He, he, he outlined all this natural equity. And he says, I count it, but giant pile of poo. Mm -hmm. I count it dung, refuse. So what we do, when we understand that, that, that he's the life giver, he's the, he's the source of all Zoe, supernatural life, the river of God, we take our dung and refuse and we offer it up to him and say, I just exchange my life. And, 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 and it looks like sacrificing time, sacrificing energy, not giving God the leftovers, giving him the first fruits. What happens is you start to lock into something that's incredibly powerful. Now, I've solicited and unsolicited, I've been talking to people over, the, over the, in this last season about this Melchizedek, and they're going, it's changing my life, Todd. It's changing my life. I'm seeing things I've never seen before. It's changing my life. And I'm just going, that's, that's just incredible. Now, you know that we're an incredible financial blessing here. Um, we, we shared with our church that, you know, we, we, we just scraped over the line getting this building. We've got this beautiful building, you know, on the edge of the city. Um, you know, God spoke to someone and they paid it off. And so we're debt free. We've got solar panels on the roof. So we won't be having electric. And when it gets all hooked up, we won't have electricity bills soon. No, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. But people are coming to me saying, my Life is being changed. So how is it getting changed? Unfortunately, because of, uh, you know, relative growth, we have to engage with the fundamentals that you never graduate from. So firstly, a priest has to offer up sacrifices. Jesus is the sacrifice. We identify with him as a living sacrifice. This is just, a, we could just park it there and just, you know, shut the broadcast down and, and, and so, but it looks like something, and it says here, uh, as a living sacrifice, it says now that uh, we offer up spiritual sacrifices. So we don't, we don't shed blood anymore. There's spiritual sacrifices. You're the sacrifice, but what we do as well, and that we may proclaim the praises of him that called us out of the darkness into this light. So the first thing we do, we're teaching people how to engage heaven. Now, 
what happens is that uh, this is really, really interesting. God says in, in, in Exodus 28, Moses, get Aaron and his sons and separate them to me so they may minister to me. Mm-hmm. You go, okay. And then you start to realize you're going, hang on, hang on. God wants to be ministered to. He wants to be ministered to. And you know what? All of our teaching, no, 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 sorry, broad sweeping generalizations. A lot of our teachings about how to get stuff from God. So with this, with the, with the priesthood, it's like, so God wants me to minister to him. Yeah, that's the primary. That's what priests do. You minister to the Lord. You mean I have to sow into that like it's sacrifice? That's what a priest does. It's sacrificial. So, okay. Um, so it's just singing. No, no. So now you go, I come to the Lord. And in the spirit, I am clothed with Christ, robes of righteousness, etc., which is greater than the 12 stones the, uh, on the breastplate, which is greater than the, the gold plate, you know, holy son of the Lord, which is greater than the onyx stones, which is greater than the, 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 the tunic and the, the, sorry, the ephod and, 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 the, and, the, and the, um, all of that stuff is greater. Those are types, but we're meant to see, this is what, this is what's amazing. When you can quarantine your ministry to the Lord as not a preamble before you want your needs met, if you can start to posture yourself to offer up sacrifices to him, it will cost you time, it will cost you focus, it will cost you, right, even lay down your own stuff. If you minister to him first, it unlock his heart, we're talking with sin, crazy favour. We're, 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 and then what happens? So are people going to heaven or is heaven coming down or we're getting smeared with oil? Yes to all the above. And then from that place, we actually see, I believe priesthood is the pathway to king, kingly rule. So David functioned as a priest way before he was a king because he, he created pathways in himself and in the, in, the, in the eternal realm before he slayed Goliath and ruled, ruled Israel. And so if people don't, if people don't understand priesthood it's always a subconscious remember it's the subconscious narrative is what we really are not what we say we are theologically or doctrinally it's what we carry in our heart and there's some things that are so idolatrous that we yes we love god but we really want this well that's just idolatry i'm just saying if we if, we, if we're going if we're talking about going before the throne uh, going through the fire wood haste double gold silver precious stones so the priesthood helps us to 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 put those to bed put this put it to the sword and it looks like uh, Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all these things will be added. So we're now getting, inviting people to minister to the Lord. And I'm telling you right now, telling you right now, Paul said in, in uh, first, uh, Second Corinthians 5, he said, we make it our aim to be pleasing to him. So there's something about when you reorientate yourself to bring him pleasure, he returns it a hundredfold. And this is so different to the just, I've got to just pray and I've got to this, because it says, that you, I, want, I want to paraphrase and extrapolate something, but there's license there. It says in uh, uh, John 4, that God is spirit. He said, God the Father is seeking worshippers, those who worship him seek his spirit and in truth. God the Father is seeking worshippers. God the Father is seeking priests. So rather than just go, oh, I'm just going to praise the Lord and get in his presence, you go, everything, I, whenever I praise God. Now, in the invisible realm, you're offering up sacrifice. It could look like in, in, uh, incense. It could look like a substance. But you're offering up sacrifices and you're actually going, I'm really offering this up. Now, let's just say you have a day. You go, I, I've had a really bad day with my business. My relationships are struggling with this. And you come to him and then you start to offer up sacrifice. You've offered up a deeper sacrifice. You know, there was a day, there was a, uh, I, I received some traumatic news years ago. And I just, I, 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 I felt like I I'd got stomach punch over the wind knocked out of me. And I just chose to praise God and just felt like words. And I was just, I was, I had no spirit. I was just smashed, Daniel, smashed. I chose just, Lord, I love you. I don't understand this. I thank you. I worship you. And it felt, felt so mechanical. Then I had to run a meeting in this state of trauma or shock. And I remember because that sacrifice was like the widow's mind, I remember just walking towards people with my hand up and they were getting thrown against the wall. I remember like how much, because it's, it's all relative. Some of your survivors, they are still waiting for a rescuer. And God says, no, you've got to check. You are a king and a priest. Start to offer up 
sacrifices so, so I can pour out more oil than you could ever, ever, ever imagine. And, and, and so, 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 so priesthood creates uh, those pathways. And we're finding that if you can get, 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 get your focus off of your, 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 your pain, your trauma, your, your belly button, your knee, your wounds, your ulcers, and you minister to him, he can put Humpty Dumpty back together again better than any, well, he's the only one that can. So I think that this is what we're finding. Now, uh, and so then out of that place, we will go from the Aaron's rod that budded into the, the, the iron scepter to rule the nations with the Lord. But we're, the, 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 the testimonies are coming in. It's changing my life. The Lord's, see, you go, okay, I want to I want to know more about myself. And there's a place for personality tests. There is. But when you look to him and get absorbed with him, he shows you who you really are, not what people say you are and not your natural, you know, um, uh, identity. So this kings and priests stuff is really deep. We're saying to people, if you give God 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes at night and and cultivate it, I don't say every day because if you say every day and someone misses a day and they get condemned, you know, all that rubbish. So we say regularly. But what if God was to jump into that time and you have visitation and that's what we're seeing. And some people, I, I, I'm consistently, people going, this is changing my lifetime. So why? Because it already is. You're already a king and a priest. You're functioning now on a priestly level. So now your spirit is going to become more dilated. You'll receive more revelation. Your faith realm will explode. You're actually in a place you can actually receive, whereas before you're so consumed with receiving, it ch- puts a chokehold on your ability to receive. But we have to quarantine. We have to uh, uh, basically, you know what? I, I, I'm on the, I was created to bring him pleasure, to please him. So now as a priest... You know, I've had a bad day or I feel a bit flat. I'm going to now minister to him. He just says, separate Aaron and his sons to minister to me. But what's amazing, Daniel, is that rather than going in once a year on the Day of Atonement, you know, with a rope around your leg and, 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 and you know, we don't know whether what sort of time travel or space travel for uh, Aaron did. We just don't know. But we, are, we can go before the throne of grace all the time. And so we see back here in the book of Revelation is that the supernatural is not to disassociate into a subculture of the church. The supernatural is to engage on a very real experiential visceral level to actually change the natural world. And this is where we're at because we have to, I have to fulfill those timelines that the Lord's put in my heart. They weren't, they weren't imagination. You've got yours. I should be, I wish I should have been with you at least twice by now. You know, and that I would have loved to have come back to Texas with you guys. I mean, uh, maybe not this week, but maybe this week wouldn't have been a good week. But, um, <laughs> you, you know. We, 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 uh, we, have, uh, we still have some steaks, Texas steaks we need to eat together, Todd. I, I, look, I'm feeling, I'm feeling a lot of glory on that. And <laughs> I, 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 so, so, so this, 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 this priesthood of Melchizedek, God wanted to speak more, but the body of Christ was not interested in intimacy. See, see, into me, see. Like, like, don't be pretentious. God, you know, I'm a bit of a, a bit of a loser sometimes, and I'm this, and I, I self-sabotage, and I feel sorry for myself, and I'm not in alignment with, you know, what you've, you know, like this. But, but Lord, I just, I, I bring that to you. I cast my kiss upon you because you care for me. And now, so, so then what we got people doing, starting to do it, is this, don't just stand and go, praise you, Jesus, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, but praise you, Jesus. Start to get good at it. We study the Psalms, meditate, exalt the Lord of God and worship at his footstool, holy as he. Uh, you know, all the nations, he has to humble himself just to see down at the earth. The nations are dropping the bucket to him. He is merciful. Your gentleness has made me great. You know, um, our Lord God, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power. Nothing is too difficult to you. Who are you are playing? You should become a mountain with shouts of grace, grace, and as a rubber ball will put up the capstone. So start to research. Get good at it. Get good at ministering to the Lord as a priest. The better you get at that, the more glory will open up, and then you rule from a place of glory. It's a whole other time. So I just feel that we have to get hold of the priesthood reality first. You'll start speaking. Things will change. Now, as a residual benefit, um, you, know, you know how this works. I don't understand it, but I'm appearing in people's dreams all the time praying for them people people going to trances during the day and i'm laying hands on them and prophesying and they're, and they're coming out of it set free i don't understand it i don't understand it but i'm but literally like people are awake and i've come through the wall i don't get it no i angel of light no no it was it just I, 
they got they got set free, healed, and that. So so the point is this: we know that the, the, the human spirit is a transdimensional being spirit, and we're made in God's image, and He's in more places than one more place in more places than one at a time. And so there you go, it goes without saying. I don't understand it, but where this stuff is really happening, and, and this is beyond ministry now. Not that we no no, no that's terrible. I put it. We're always meant to minister. Don't get me wrong. But that, that we, we have to change history. We have to change history because at the moment, the disinformation, I'm, I'm blown away with what's happened in America, but it doesn't surprise me. Um, in oh, Australia, oh, we, we, we even censored your government with our social media. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. No, 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 I know. I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You, you want Australian political views from your actual elected government? Can't get it yeah. here. No, 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 it's ridiculous. So, so this is back engineering it to last year. We, we, I, I'm just telling you now, unless, unless I'll just be just upfront and again, deplatforming statements on, on mass coming. Um, just through incredible encounters and revelation, there is a level of a, a cycle. And if you look at the build up to World War II, that's what it is. Is it right now that the, the media gate, the propaganda, the brown shirts, from BLM to Antifa to whatever else, um, and Joseph Goebbels took that, that that propaganda and all that sort of stuff. Every, that gate is being taken, and right now they're looking at you know we would have never. You, they're looking at special quarantine facilities where you're taken away from your family, dude. It's, ha- it's as it's happening, you know. And the church is like, oh, hey, you know, like what are we going to do? Wake up when we're flipping in box cars going? So, like, really, come on. That's not going to be me. So, so what happened last year? Why is this a big deal? Why is this Melchizedek thing? Get away from singing songs. You are a living sacrifice. You are a royal priesthood. You come to the Lord in Jesus' name, through the blood of Jesus. Make sure you're walking in forgiveness. And then you come to him and you're offering up spiritual sacrifices. Oh, it might look like, might look like singing. It might look like decreeing. It might look like worshipping and thanking him, right? But get away from I am. I, you know, I'm not really into singing a lot within your miss it because we're called to offer up spiritual sacrifices. Why? I'll tell you why. About March last year. So I'm aware, I'm going to use California because California is an extreme example. You still, you still can buy your, 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 your marijuana. You can go get your alcohol. You can go to Planned Parenthood. You can do all those things, but you can't do church. It's dangerous. These are essential services. Now, you, you see Christians going, hey, come here, come on. You might spread. What, what, what was it? About? You can do. You can do Zoom. But you can't worship. What, what, why? They're trying to shut down the priesthood. So what happened in March last year when the whole world shut down in one week, roughly, is this? I'll read it to you. I'm glad you. I'm glad you guys all asked inside your heart. Right? Acts chapter 15, verses 16, 17 from the Jerusalem Council. And after this, I will, re- I will rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I will rebuild its ruins. I will set it up so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord and all the Gentiles who could by my name, says the Lord who does these things. So, so the tabernacle of David is another expression for the order of Melchizedek. Wow. So if we can shut down worship, we stop angels ascending and descending. Wouldn't it be interesting if when the world shut down, it cor- correlated with, with book of Revelation, it says, and there was silence in heaven for half an hour. Wouldn't that be interesting? <laughs> So when we don't minister to the Lord, angels can't take your sacrifice and bring it before the throne. And then the blessing can't flow down. God dwells in the praises of his people. So this Melchizedek priesthood is so much more supernatural than we understand. But we have to go through the cross and offer up sacrifices on a sacrificial basis. The tabernacle of David is corporate and individual. It is a heart after God, but it is offering up continual worship. You know, David brought back the ark. Moses' tabernacle was still functioning in Gibeon for 30 years with no ark of the covenant, still using the Levitical order. In David's tabernacle, it was 20. They did one lot of sacrifices. They did 24-7 worship from there on in. Anyone could approach. There was no veil. It was a type of the Melchizedek priesthood. How, How on earth can you set up your own deal and Uzziah got leprosy, Jeroboam got killed and Saul got deposed? How? Because David understood priesthood and God showed him to do this. That's why you've got the keys of David. 
right? Um, the keys of David, uh, um, the, uh, the tabernacle of David, and Jesus will be the son of David because he understood. He wrote Psalm 110, the Lord has sworn and he will not relent. I've made you a priest according to the order of Melchizedek. So Jack, Jesus, uh, uh, sorry, David understood that foreshadowing. So at the moment, if, if we can function as priests and kings, we start to see that heavenly place. And the, the more broke, busted and disgusted you are, the more powerful your encounters will be. But we're, we're just saying to people, 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes at night, well, that's a bit much. Well, they're fine. Don't have, you don't have to be blessed. You don't have to have breakthrough. You don't have to have transformation. You can just stay as you are, so that's cool. But those who want that is that you can't change anything out there until this world changes. It's, it, nothing's changing out there. It's, it's, and, and this is not disassociating into some fantasy world. Real spirituality overflows and changes everything in the natural. Speak to the mountain, be uprooted and cast into the sea. So, so this is so, so cool, Daniel. And we just, there's so many incredible examples that we're seeing, but we're seeing blessing. And um, so, so when you look at this, you go, why should we be speculating about possible events when we're not doing the one ones? And I'm not saying it could, we could be at the end of the Kronos, loaded up with Kairos, or we could be in an eschatological cycle. But there are, there are patterns in cycles. There's no doubt about it. And I just think that we just don't, we, we're asking the wrong questions. Lord, when are you going to manifest? And everyone's looking at this sign with no personal transformation. If we engage with what already is, you're already a king and a priest. Some of you guys are listening going, yeah, I might try that. You don't try it. You are that. You already are. You're just not functioning. Can you imagine, God, I want you to change my life and transform me, but I will not do the 101s. You, the 101 says, you want me. You don't want my ministry. You want me. You want me to minister to you first and foremost. And then it just, it's, it's really cool. It's, 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 I'm nerding out. I'm nerding out. <laughs> I love it. This has been so good. This is so good. You know, and, and one of the things that um, I have to say, uh, <laughs> It's very clear uh, from beginning to end, Jesus is trying to get us partnered with him in bringing his government into the earth. Earth then becomes the springboard for redemptive agendas that go to the creation. If we can't land it here, we're not gonna be able to land it beyond. And the Bible clearly says the whole creation grows. It didn't say the whole earth. Romans chapter 8, the whole creation. King James says, creature groans, awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God. You know, it's just, there's a, there, there is a vast, vast exploit to, like, like, like exploit field for the sons of God, you know? Mm -hmm. And people, I believe that this is what God is opening up at this hour it's mm. it's a truly supernatural transition for the body of christ it's, we're leaving behind the shell of you know 3d thinking yep. you would call it the prince of, prince of greece you got it's, it, it's being it's it, it's being taken off like like the husk of a, of a of a piece of corn it's just like god's just stripping it and you know the stripping hurts because it's, it's really dividing the chaff from the wheat. I mean, it is. It is dividing the chaff from the wheat. We're seeing. That's why, that's why, Paul, that, that's why Paul says, I don't, I, I'm not even going to compare the hardships I've got now for the glory that will be revealed in us. So the stripping and the husk, it's, it, it'd be worse to miss your internal inheritance. <laughs> and, and, and the thing is, there's no way to accidentally land on that by being super spiritual, whatever that means to you, without standing on a firm foundation of the basics, you know? Well, and, and I love that you said that because, you know, that's what some, somewhere we've been. You know, I, I, I refuse to be a ministry that is essentially a cereal box, right? Fruits, nuts, and flakes. Like, that is not us. We're not that. <laughs> folks if, okay. if you're not watching the youtube then you didn't see todd's response to that comment but like 
I, I mean, look, if you go into the supernatural as a Christian leader or as a Christian body, like there are things that happen and um, accusations and so forth. And, and, and the thing is, you know, we've been on a series on, on spiritual pillars and talking about you have to pass the tests. You got to pass that submission test. You got to pass that patience test. You, <laughs> you got to pass the faith test and the financial test. You got to pass them all. You, you want to step into that supernatural realm of it and demonstrated glory and priesthood. Truly, like, uh, yeah, pass the tests. It's, it's necessary. Yes, Todd. You know, the, the trajectory. Let's just talk about the trajectory. Think about a big, a big issue in the body of Christ is, wow, I really do struggle with my prayer life. And there's so many unanswered prayers, so many unanswered prayers. And now I've probably got a really strong grace to see prayers answered. Some are still pending. Many have been answered. So if you go like this, can you imagine, can you imagine right, I'm going to really believe for this. And, and that's a great start because, you know, it's, without faith it's impossible to believe and you must believe that it's already happened. Just Right? How do the courts of heaven work in conjunction with belief you've received on the finished work of the cross? And, uh, can, you know, didn't Jesus take curses on, you know, you know we've all been there, and, you know, nice. But you go, I'm really believing for this. And I, I stood on the word for weeks and months and then God did it. Uh, uh, uh. Whew. Okay, all right, now let's go. Let's see that to do list that's got like 1,564 requests. We're now on number two. It's never going to happen. So, what we do is we actually do the primary that God wants. You are the prayer, you are the scroll. As people engage this, you start to function in a heavenly dimension and that's where you get your, see that the scripture is, is written to be understood through the Holy Ghost only in the heavenly dimensions only and then you steward it down here. When you function in the priesthood, you're going to find God answering prayers you haven't prayed. God answering prayers you've stopped praying, right? Because, the, because what's, what, ha what happens is you come into, the, into the, the seventh day, which is the place of rest. As I've sworn, they were not into my rest. And, and we come into the place of rest where it's not like, like, you know, pumping up your faith and stuff. Is we yield to that. We give him what he wants. He wants intimacy. He wants you. He wants your heart. He wants you to use the keys of David through the tabernacle of David, through the order of Melchizedek, and, and, and offer up spiritual sacrifices and come to that place where, is there precedent? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, we say oh, uh, in the Torah, and it's called, and these blessings will overtake you. So because we haven't lived that priesthood mentality, that sacrificial, that works with the finished work, that works with the already is and has, you know, already is by his stripes you are healed. All this, it already works with that. Then we come into that place of, of, of heavenly abundance. And that's what, you know, whether you want to call it Noah's Ark, whether you want to call it Psalm 91, uh, there, there's so much currency God puts on. He says, because he has set his love upon me, I will honour him and deliver him. So we put low currency on loving God. Mary sat at Jesus' feet. Martha was busy. Um, and he said, it won't be taken away from Mary. This is what pleases God. And from that hub, you can wag and wheel out into everything. But it's the primary. You, you don't become a king and a priest. You are. So if you're not functioning in a primary reality, no wonder you've, everything's out of whack or, you know, old-fashioned term, discombobulated, you know. No wonder it is. And so when we learn what pleases God, right, and we start to drill down on this. You go, the world shut down the tabernacle of David corporately last year. And then in its place, a government of craziness. I just look at the, 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 the what is it? How many, how many executive orders were in the first 20 days? Over 50, right? Oh, and we're yeah, talking. It's insane. It's wait, like wait, wait. That. So, so, so either you sit there and you try and this, this, this cognitive uh, dissonance kicks in or you you solution it and you go, I've, I've got to go to heavenly places so I can administrate. But for me, <laughs> the thing that really, really challenged me and woke me up is that my, I've, had, I've had my timeline stolen. I'm meant to be ministering in the nations. And so what am I? And the Lord goes, what are you going to do about it? You know, oh, well, I'm just going to read, you know, end, end times uh, uh, theories. That, no, 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 no. See, 
if the little horn intends to change timelines, what, what, where are the sons? Come on. Where, where are the priests and the kings? It worked for Hezekiah. It worked for Joshua. It worked for Mary. Like, what are we doing? So, so that you're always going to look for biblical precedent. See, now, I'm, now the rule has come out, obviously. But I think that um, this is where I know I have to, you know, whatever the end of my life looks like, I want to present to him. So those, those things you, you sent me here to do, done, you know. Uh, the Apostle Paul says, I've run the race. I've finished. I'm done. I've fulfilled it. So I think that um, I think that, that that at stake, you see, people listening to this, you've got all these promises. And, and, and you go, God didn't change his mind. Some of the visions that we've got, we've had, they're, they're real. But, but how can this happen? Because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So if we engage this priesthood, this royal priesthood reality on a fundamental grassroots level, we actually create pathways of access and pathways of access, and then from this place we can speak. But if, if we're just going to get angry, get angry at Trump prophecies, get angry at prophets, get, it's, it's counterproductive, it's stupid. And, and we're just part of the problem. We just perpetuate some low-level narrative where it's always someone else's fault. I'm not going to do it. So, you know, there we go, rant over, hallelujah. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, every time we sit down, Todd, it's always a, a, a lot of fun. I I don't know that we're ever going to hit the end of the conversation. But we are going to hit the end of this podcast. And I'll say one know, more thing. One, one, one more thing. Oh my gosh. If, 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 what, if, I, if I said this, right, and it's, it's been quickened to you, I've got to just start ministering to the Lord. 15 minutes, 15 minutes. Start mm. to look into Psalms. Look at things you can praise God for be grateful for he wants the he wants you to engage heavenly protocols of wisdom and find a heart connection not a fam, not being overly familiar with a god we don't know well enough engage wisdom protocols the blood of jesus the name of jesus you are a high priest you clothed with christ offering up spiritual sacrifices to make a heart connection and here's this is this is what i'll leave it at this we don't need the whole body to do this we just need a remnant we need a, 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 a quorum to hit critical mass. God always works through the remnant. So if you're listening to this and this has moved you, please do it. Mm. Do it for 40 days and, and, and you look in the mirror and go, my life's changed. I've got, I've got seasoned ministries going, I'm, I'm actually doing this. I've, I'm experiencing things I've never experienced before. So I just wanted to lay down that practical thing and then psh, done. Holy Thank Ghost. <laughs> so good, so good, so good. Um, wow, folks. Uh, Todd Weatherly can be found at fieldofdreams.org.au. Uh, they do have a Facebook page. You haven't been deplatformed yet, have you? Yes. Uh, I, yeah. No. I, I'm, I'm, I don't post a lot of things. I just mostly troll. Um, and so... <laughs> I, I, yeah, it's, 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 it's our website. It's our website. And plus, I'm all over Vimeo. So you go to our website, uh, we got we got uh, Field of Dreams on Facebook, you know, go on that. You, you'll see all those teachings for, for going back ages. My wife's an amazing teacher and we've got an amazing team, you know, Daryl Belinda, they, they, they're amazing prophets and apostles and, uh, you know, yeah, get, get on there and have a look. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's this church Facebook and the church website. And, and by the way, folks, you know, we do also offer a free network here for Bride Tribers. It's at manifest.space. And if you go to manifest.space, you can create a profile, join for free. It is just like a Facebook, really, but for Bride Tribe. And uh, we do not censor Christian and uh, logical posts in Jesus' name. <laughs> so, folks, with that said, you've been listening to Discovering Truth with uh, Myself and Todd Weatherly. Until next time, God bless and Godspeed. You've been listening to Discovering Truth with Dan Duvall. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, like our video, and share this with friends. This podcast is a production of Bride Ministries International. Visit our website at brideministriesinternational.com to enjoy the Bride Ministries Church. 
the Bride Ministries Institute, free resources, and to support us financially.